Oh, there we go. You're yeah. all good. Uh, my name is Waylon Pahona. I'm Hopi, Tewa, and Pipash. And uh, really glad to be here. Uh, super, super excited. And um, I'm going to go ahead and start my story. So um, I wanted to let you know that I wanted to honor my mother tonight. Um, and I wanted to speak in her Pipash language and greet myself in her Pipash language. So um, that's my mother's language. Um, November 22nd, I'm sitting in the garage and I am I just got a call that my mom has got COVID. I'm sitting there and my initial thought is that my mom's going to die. My mom's not going to live through COVID. My mom has a coral-like substance that grows in her lungs. She has asthma, um, she has diabetes, she has high blood pressure. She has all these health conditions and the only thing that I can think of is my mom is not gonna live through COVID. And so I have a decision that I have to make. Rewind back six months, June 16th, 2020. I'm in Hopi. I'm burying an uncle who just passed away to COVID. I'm at the gravesite getting ready to put on the hazmat suit, have the hearse drive up, and just make it just way uh, about 100 yards from us to have us put on the hazmat suit, gown up and bury my uncle. While I'm burying my uncle, I'm thinking of all the things in my family, the things that we couldn't do as Hopi people. We couldn't have ceremony for my uncle. We couldn't send him off in a way because at the time nobody knew what was happening with COVID. And so in that process, um, my uncle, um, he was uh, mentally challenged and um, he was getting old. But in that, but thinking about everything, understanding that my family wasn't being healthy themselves, I thought of myself and realized that I wasn't being healthy for myself. I wasn't taking care of my body. And it seemed like a lot of people that I that, that around me were dying of COVID um, because of health, health issues. So on my drive back to Phoenix, I'm going back from the I'm leaving the reservation to go to Phoenix. And I'm just thinking and I'm thinking of all the things in my life, the things that I've done, you know, my legacy. How is my legacy going to continue? How are people going to remember me? And I think I need to take care of my health because there's still a lot of work for me to do as an indigenous man, as a Hopi, a Tewa, a Maricopa Pipash man. There's so much that I still need to do, but I wasn't taking care of my health. That very next day, I start walking. I start walking early in the morning because I had two knee surgeries. 2020 was a crazy year. I threw up my back. Um, I had a knee surgery. And so I was back to square one of my physical activity, my exercise, and my movement. So I go back and I start walking. Fast forward back to November 22nd. For six months, I walked. I, I thought about my family members. I prayed. And I really wanted to do something because there was so much hurt in the world. There was so much death. There was so much going on with people. And on, on November 24th, my birthday, I always try to do something special to raise money and to do something for people. And so I decided to walk for water, for clean water, for filtration systems for my Hopi people. And so I started getting prepared. I started getting ready for that. Uh, how is the walk going to be? Am I going to am I going to make it, man? How? Uh, because two hundred miles is, is a long ways. And so I get to that moment, two only two days before I'm going to walk, and I'm having to make the decision: Do I continue? Should I stay because my mom's going to die? I sit in the garage with my girlfriend. We talk about it. 
And she says, you know, I, I will go with whatever, you know, you feel, you know, she was there for me. And she was, she was just, she, she, I just needed her at that time to really kind of understand what I was going to do. So in my mind, I'm like, I can't go. I can't, I can't see her. I can't, I can't be part of all of that. So maybe I should just take this walk on. And so I tell my girlfriend, I'm going to continue with this walk. And I figured I don't want to walk where there's no reception. I don't want to walk and I don't want to get stuck where if my mom dies, that I won't be able to, to hear from the hospital or I won't be able to hear from her. So I made the decision that I was going to walk from my mom's house in the, in the Pipash land um, where she's from, where I'm from. I was going to walk 26.2 miles every single day from my mom's house, carrying water that we've collected from all over the world. We carried that water in prayer and solidarity. We carried that water to revitalize the water in Hopi. We carried that water for, for everyone's prayers. That was the intention of the walk. But I decided to make the walk not only about the water for Hopi, but for the prayers of loved ones that we lost to COVID, for prayers for loved ones who are going through COVID. And we started the journey. November 22nd, we started the journey from my mom's house, carrying the water, praying. I had all my friends come close. I had my closest relatives from Hopi say a prayer and send us off. Throughout the next eight days, it was beautiful. You know, the first day, just seeing all my friends together join me, you know, people driving by, honking, people dropping off money for us to give to Hopi. People coming and praying with the water. It was so powerful to have all of these people. My brother came. My brother came from California. He walked with us. My girlfriend walked every single way with me the whole way, driving, walking, driving, walking, taking care of me, making sure that I was fed. And all I could think about was my mom. By the third, by the fourth day, I get a call. By then I was pretty, I was pretty, uh, my feet were hurting, my, my legs, I was cramping, my, I mean, my feet were bleeding. And I get a call. Um, from my mom. I could hear the breathing machine. I could hear the machine in the background. I could hear the beeps. I could barely make out what my mom was saying. And she said, I want to live. I can't leave this. I still have so much to do. I need to be here. I need to be here to, to, to have you finish this walk. Having that call and hearing my mom's words were, was, was the most energy, the most um, um, power that I could get from her to, to have me continue with that walk. And so it felt better. I felt happy that I could hear my mom's voice. And in that moment, I knew my mom was going to live. I knew she was going to make it. By the sixth day, my mom gets out of the hospital. And it's so, it's sad, but it's also beautiful to, to, to stand across the road from her fence and to see my mom waving at us in the window. And then for me to start my walk again with my friends. 26.2 miles walking, thinking, praying, sharing conversation with other Indigenous people, sharing conversations with my girlfriend, Dawn, um, who, who also helped us on this journey. And then coming back and seeing my mom waiting for us. I then made the decision by the sixth day to walk from Winslow, Arizona to, to, to Hopi. So we drove out. We drove out to Winslow and it was cold. You know, it was uh, November 24th of last year was cold. So um, Phoenix isn't as cold as uh, 
northern Arizona, and man, it was it was it was so cold. We were bundled up. We were walking. People from Winslow joined us, took some pictures. And as we made that journey, we got some calls that we lost more family members. We lost more people from the village. One person in particular I played softball with all my life was a very respected man, not too much older than me. I got word on Journey that he passed away. And so while we're walking, I'm thinking, I'm praying, please, please, please help us. Please, Creator, save my people. Make them strong. Also giving prayers for my mom, for her recovery. Everyone around me, that they're safe, that that we're going to get through this time. By the eighth day, we made it to Hopi. It was the most beautiful thing because for six months, I walked, I prayed, I seen the sunrise. I closed my eyes when the sun would come up and I would feel the rays of the Creator. So powerful. I almost felt guilty that the journey was ending because all of this time I put in the sacrifice to do this for my people. When we got done, we carried that water. We carried that water to one of our natural springs and we deposited and we prayed that our our water would be revitalized, that our springs would be revitalized, that we would get support and help for our Hopi people for the water. I left Hopi and I came back home thankful that my mom lived. I know for a fact that the prayers, that the water, that the connection with all the positive energy kept my mom alive. Our teachings, our stories, our strength helped get my mom out of the hospital. She lives today. I just texted her just before. Said, I love you, mom. I'm going on in five minutes. And I'm thankful for her resilience and what she's created in me. So thank you. Thank you for listening to my story. Kukwai, kunda in my Hopi language and kunda in my Tewa language. Unfortunately, now I've lost over 50 people. 50 people that I know have passed away to COVID. Not only on my reservation, not in, only in my villages, but on my Gila River village. Close friends, relatives. COVID is real. And I wish people could see that. Thank you.